Welcome, everyone, to the first ever episode of the Watch and Listen podcast. The Watch and Listen podcast is brought to you by our title sponsor. It feels so good to say that, to start a podcast from the ground up with a sponsor, and the fact that these guys had confidence in us to do this and represent them well. We are very, very happy to be working with them. Crowning Caliber uh, is a high-end luxury watch retailer, broker, buyer, seller, servicer, uh, uh, they're out of Atlanta. Most of their business is done on the internet, crownandcaliber.com. I have uh, I discovered them because I bought watches from them. Um, they have a, a, a limited warranty with their watches, meaning if you smash it with a hammer, that's on you. But if it doesn't keep correct time, they will fix it. They have in-house watchmakers and techs, uh, refinishers and valuators. They carry over 40 brands, Rolex, Omega, Panerai, um, all the biggies, and then some of the uh, some of the oddballs as well. They stock over 2,000 watches, uh, and they have a non-commissioned client services team, so they can help you find the best watch to fit your needs uh, without the pressure of wanting to make a sale. Um, they use historical data and current markets to determine offers if you want to sell them a watch. That's right. This ad, I'm not trying to sell you a watch. I'm actually trying to get you to sell Crown and Caliber a watch. That's where they buy their stock from people like you. There's no shady or parking lot internet deals. Um, I have sent dozens of packages back and forth with Crown and Caliber over UPS, uh, fully insured, um, and I've never had an issue at all. Um, and if you do want to sell them a watch, you can do cash or trade on up to something in their stock. Uh, check out Crown and Caliber and see if they've got the new or vintage watch that you have been dreaming about. This episode of the Swing Tire Podcast is also brought to you by Beeline Coffee. I'm drinking Beeline Coffee right this second. Um, it's car enthusiasts and coffee nerds coming together to create delicious uh, single origin micro roast. The stuff is, it's not cheap, but it is delicious. And if you are if you're into high-end luxury watches, you're listening to this show, you're probably also into delicious coffee. Uh, there's an overlap. I know there's overlap. And if you go to Beeline Coffee, BeelineCoffee.com and use code TST, that's from my other show, uh, you get 15% off code TST and free shipping uh, for anything from just one pound or one bag all the way up to their monthly or annual subscription plans. And 15% uh, off a subscription plan with free shipping, that's a chunk of change you're saving. So thank you to our two uh, sponsors here in episode one, and uh, please enjoy the first episode of the Watch and Listen podcast. What's happening, kids? This is Watch and Listen. It feels interesting to say that after saying different podcast name for five years. Welcome. If you love watches, we are here for you and to learn. My name is Matt Farah. I uh, am was and am the host of the Smoking Tire Podcast and YouTube series, and I would like to introduce Mr. Cameron Weiss of the Weiss Watch Company. Yeah, well, good to be here. Cameron! <laughs> This is what I'm talking about, man. I I've mean, got to get as excited about uh, speaking into a mic as you. <laughs> Dude, aren't you excited to do a podcast with your boy, Matt? I'm very excited. And we are excited because uh, Crown and Caliber has agreed to sponsor us, so we have to do them justice. They've sent us some watches to play with, which is fun, but Cameron, I need you. I need you to be energetic, bro. All right. <laughs> do it. Do it. Get in. Aren't you? This is awesome. This is gonna be fun. Yeah, and we've got a hundred thousand dollars in uh, in watches, right from Crown and Sitting Caliber in, the, in a UPS box. <laughs> we'll get to to play with them, take them apart, take a look at them. Yeah, when you're doing a watch podcast, it turns out you can convince uh, retailers to send, <laughs> to send you a UPS box that looks like they robbed you know a watch store. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I was pretty impressed with the package. <laughs> it's super super awesome. So with this first episode, we're gonna have to do a little. We're going to play a little getting to know you, and we are going to start with Mr. 
Cameron M. Weiss. Uh, Cameron M. Weiss on Instagram. For those who are watching this podcast on YouTube, you're going to also be able to get it on iTunes and where else, where else ever you're getting the podcast. And uh, for those of you just listening to the show, uh, it's video as well. Hence, watch and listen. We have a really cool rig in this studio. Uh, look at that. That's not a picture of a Rolex. That's an actual Rolex that Cameron can wave his hand on. Yeah. So uh, there's a video portion. So Cameron, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you in this podcasting mood right now. Tell me who you are. What do you do? Why do you love watches? And why are we, why are we talking about them on this show? I have always loved watches. Um, I'm a watchmaker. I, I'm here in L.A. and I actually manufacture watches in Los Angeles, hand-assembled hand finished um i used to work for automar piguet and vacheron constantine so i i know a lot about the the swiss world as well but just super excited to be here and getting to play with some other watches outside of uh weiss watches i know you came on my other show the smoke entire podcast and gave me your background and so it's weird to kind of sit here with me again and go through it but you know people don't just get into watchmaking and uh, that's not something a lot of people do. It's a it's a fairly niche industry. Um, how do you get into that? A love of watches. <laughs> you you got to be. You just have to be really into it because you sit there working on tiny little uh, minuscule parts in just thirty millimeter square area, focused on that tiny little uh, realm of watch parts. All day. What? I mean, because I've tried working on cars before. That's very difficult. It's very, very difficult. And your hands get, you know, bloody and you your back hurts and you're l- crawling all over the place. You know, what's it like to deal with a ti- the tiniest little piece? Patience. Patience are very important. You have to be able to just stay focused and sit for long periods of time. Uh, when I first started, I would realize I'd get to a point where... Something wasn't working out, and I wanted to smash the watch. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to throw it against the wall. Did you ever actually smash it? No, that's that's when you call it quits for the day, and you you move on. You you go to a polishing machine maybe, and you <laughs> you take out some uh, some anger on the buffing wheels. But is that uh, is that zen to actually to do the polishing? No, I don't think so. <laughs> polishing is a uh, it's dirty for a watchmaker. It's it's a completely different type of uh, type of craft. And it's not really watchmaking to be on the buffing wheel, but it's something that we kind of have to know to, to get by. But it, it's like, uh, it's a different art form, really. The, um, you know, the connection between cars and watches is, is how I ended up here. Um, you know, the, uh, the mechanics of it and wearing, you know, wearing a machine and, and sort of learning about the, the specialness of, one little oh that one's got the red lettering and that you know especially when you go down the Porsche rabbit hole um so you have interesting cars uh you drive your Volk drove your Volkswagen here yeah it's lovely tell the people about your Volkswagen uh 1959 it's a ceramic green and just just beautiful it's the cutest little Volkswagen ever it is cute it's very uh, cute. yeah i think it's 36 horsepower or something like that and a little six-gallon tank of gas up front, and I actually put all my watchmaking tools up with the gas tank. It- my uh, <laughs> my collection of watches as well up with the gas tank as I was driving over here today. You really rolled the dice. Yeah. <laughs> between that, <laughs> luckily and the, there was and, no and, fires. <laughs> between that, well, last time you tried to drive that car to this studio, you didn't make it. Yeah. <laughs> your your wife called me and went, "Uh, this is embarrassing." <laughs> but, no, it's all good. I was happy to see it here in the parking lot. Yeah, we so, sailed on over. <laughs> Between that and your international uh, harvester truck, uh, you're you're old school. Yes, very. <laughs> I got a '62 international harvester that's exactly as it was made, um, just rusty and oh, here's your, and dirty. Let me, let me pull up for the people. There we go. As I'm learning to produce, you know, <laughs> and and host simultaneously. So here's your here's your lovely little green beetle. Yeah. it is like extremely fresh. Right? I'm not gonna lie. Your Beetle is is up there with the cleanest of them. And then here's your Land Rover. Yeah, that sort of works. Yeah, sort of. It's it's making some really <laughs> really nasty whining noises right now. It's embarrassing to drive. 
Yeah, and, well, as most Land Rovers are. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. And then where's your? I'm gonna. I'm, gonna sc- I'm just literally scrolling through your your pictures right now, looking for your truck. No, that's not it. Well, it's we'll find it, but it's yeah. old. <laughs> it's got to be in there. But look oh, at there the we out. Go. Where there is we it? go. Oh, here it is. <laughs> With thought, the dogs. I thought it was just a there. pail. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look how look at Bennett. There's your right? dog. So tell me, but that's your car style, right? Yeah. So to establish that. What's your watch style? You're going to see that. I want to see it. This is the, the episode. The watch style definitely, it goes hand in hand with the cards. I'm super excited. Yeah. Let's learn it. Let Bring them out. All right. I want to see what you have in the watch department. My watches are not, I've only been collecting watches for like a year. So my watches aren't that cool, but you're like someone who knows things and, and you know a lot more about this stuff. So I, I want to see it. Although... We need to do something about your your, your yeah. I, I don't team. have I don't have a beautiful carrying case. You don't nothing, you have a cardboard box. Nothing bro. fancy leather. Cameron, I just have a cardboard box Cameron's and styrofoam. A cardboard box. Can we get you a Pelican case or something? I mean, I do have a Pelican case for for Weiss watches when we take them on the road, but I don't have one. Your for, customers will be happy with that. Yeah, uh, for my personal collection. Homie, you know how the mechanic always <laughs> has the broken car and the cobbler has no shoes. Yeah, this is embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Let's all right. So, all right. so take me back. How do we want to present your watches chronologically? Um, what do you? What do you? What do you? You tell me a story. No, with I these think watches. yeah, we can just. Wow, they're all pretty look weird. Really cool. It's a lot of wow. uh, very a lot of old pocket watches. I'm seeing you pull out of this case. Yeah, I have some. How do we make? I have weird tastes. All right, I'm just gonna pull I'm them glad all out you have here. Weird taste because my tastes are like super boring. I'm like the guy that everyone hates because I buy whatever's trendy. Ooh, I like that. Take everything out, and then and then we'll and then, then we'll, we'll go through it. All right, all right. In the meantime, uh, shout out to Crown and Caliber for uh, actually making this podcast possible. They built this studio for us, uh, and uh, and uh, check go. them out if you're in the market for a really nice secondhand vintage wash. Shout out. All right. So what do we got here, Cameron? Show uh, us. We're gonna pull up the mic. The, let's the, start the with watch one my, cam. One of my first watches ever. All right. What do we got here? Um, in fact, I don't ever even remember wearing this. <laughs> there we go. Oh, spin it around. Whoop. North is the there other way. Sorry, first day <laughs> with the studio, folks. Is that yeah. a Mickey Mouse joint? There we go. Mickey Mouse. That's OG. Quartz. And even uh, he sings and dances. So That's he spins awesome. that wand around. But I, I took the batteries out so they wouldn't leak and, and destroy the movement. Something that people should do if they're trying to save a quartz watch. Is take what? The battery take the battery out. out? Yeah, take the battery out because it will wear down and then... The outside shell gets too thin, and it'll start leaking acid. This is presuming you aren't using it. Yeah, if yeah. you're not using it, if yeah. you just stick it in a box and want to save it, and take we have, that battery uh, out. We're going to have a show on various types of, of watches, including quartz. And uh, So we're yeah. not going to forget the quartz, folks. What does it say on, on, on the bezel there? I can't remember. Uh, so it's a Loras. Loras, I guess, Loras? is the... Is that an, is it is it like a real watch or is this like oh Disneyland it's a real watch. souvenir? This is a real watch. <laughs> this I have all the packaging at home too. It was a uh, I think it was fifty dollars probably back in the late eighties. Okay, so yeah. it wasn't a cheap watch by any means. And, it's pretty cool. Does you know, wait his, does Mickey move or their hands and Mickey is stuck? Uh, so his wand swings around when you hit that little button down on the left hand side by eight o'clock. His hand will swing around okay. with the wand and it'll actually play a tune. All right. Oh really? Yeah. Like a digital, like, yep, like a Nintendo exactly. tune. Yeah, is that a what? Is that a minute repeater? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a Mickey repeater. That's cool. And Mi- Mickey's got like a. What would he be doing? Is he a, is he fighting? Is that a Chuck Norris stance? Um, no, he's just dancing around. It's he's somewhere between around. Chuck Norris and Heisman Trophy. Yeah, it's me. Heisman Trophy for sure. <laughs> I think he just got the Heisman. That's a good start. Respect. Yeah, for the for the purists, I've okay. even got. I don't know if you can see this here. I the know. original Mickey Mouse embossed leather strap on there. Oh, it's upside down. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's Mickey Mouse's head upside yep. down. That's hilarious. Right. Very nice. Adds to the value. I got a fr- I got a French toast once that had that <laughs> same stamp in it at the Parker Meridian Hotel yeah. at Disney World. All right, cool. What's next? That's that's so, awesome. Next is something. Remember which dr- little different. <laughs> is that? Is that black Mickey? <laughs> I mean, I'm, so it's this, another Mickey Mouse, but... This is one of the original Mickey uh, Mouse watches. This was my father's Mickey Mouse watch. I mean, it, is Mickey Mouse a little black? A little bit. He's it looks like little... he has a little something kind of crossing over his face there. Is he also a criminal? Uh, <laughs> is there, does he have right? a criminal bandana? He's a bandit. And, and black hands. Yeah. 
This is the racist era of Mickey Mouse. Right? What year is this? This was from? Uh, the late fifties, I believe. Totally racist, Mickey yeah. Mouse. That's and crazy. Does so it work? this one, uh, it does tick, and but it's exactly that... as my dad gave it to me. So it's a little rusty and, and musty on that leather strap as well. Is it mechanical? And it's mechanical. Oh, neat. So this one's pretty cool. It's it's got his hands as well. Are you know are the, the shape hands. of the hands of the watch? Yeah, he's got. <laughs> if that was a, I mean, he's obviously anthropomorphized, but yeah. if if it was a human. His, one of his arms would be really yeah <laughs> would not be good. He's a little unbalanced. They'd be like like making movies about that guy, <laughs> <laughs> the guy with arms of wildly different lengths. Yeah, that's cool. It's crazy, but it but right? you can. It's a mecha- fully mechanical, fully wind. mechanical uh, manual wind watch. How cool! And it was my it dad's works? when he was a, a young kid. And that's yeah. super pimp. It works, uh, kind of. Cool. It needs service, but I haven't touched it at all. What else is going um, on in the Cameron Weiss? Is there another? Is there a so, mini or a Pac Man? I, I don't have Donkey any Kong? more Disney themed watches. That's the last of them. But I do have another watch from my father. And what this did your dad do? Here, uh, he was a chiropractor, actually. Oh. So he didn't wear the Mickey Mouse watch when he was uh, cracking backs, but he did wear this watch. But he wore it when he was cracking heads <laughs> in the side job. Yeah. Seiko Quartz. Seiko 70s. Quartz. Yep. So this would have been. Uh, um, one of the earlier Seiko Quartz movements in here. It's a pretty nice looking watch. Yeah, decent little uh quartz watch. The core I've been, you know, I in in I wanted to do I want to do a good job on this podcast. I don't I don't I'm learning about watches and I'm okay being a student of watches, but I'm I'm reading. I'm trying to read as much as I can, so I'm like as little of a moron as I can be. And uh, the quartz crisis was crazy. The way it just like. Like, there were so many mechanical watch brands that were just wiped out, just yeah. gone. It was crazy. And here, and Seiko can be blamed for part of that. <laughs> yeah, well, they came out with the first, uh, yeah. The first quartz. Yeah. Very cool. What yeah. else? That's nice. Um, let's see. What is, what is the Rolex with the faded bezel? Okay. Let's just, let's you want to jump right to the... Well, I think, you know, we've gone <laughs> through we've gone through Disney theme. And we've From gone Mickey through, and, uh, and Seiko's. Yeah, now you've got a ghost bezel Rolex, yep. which is awesome. I've never seen you wear this before, actually. Where did this come from? You know, I don't really wear any other watches. Besides your own. Besides my own watches now. Um, I understand that sentiment. However, yeah. a nice story about this one. I don't make a dive watch. At least not yet. Uh-huh. So I wear this when I dive. When I go Fuck scuba off. diving, you this wear is the this watch when I wear. you actually dive. Yeah. Well, I imagine you know you service it and keep the seals nicey nice, right? Yeah. So and how, how old I is also that? I have a, a pressure tester. So every time oh, I go yeah. in the water, I can check first to make sure that it is actually watertight. The pressure tester that you have is that a dry pressure tester? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you 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 can test it without accidentally ruining it if it fails the test. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. What does a pressure tester machine go for? Um, I, I think they're around five thousand dollars or something it's less like that. than I would have guessed. Yeah, it's it, small, it, I imagine. Yeah, desktop. Is that, oh, yeah, little, little cube sized thing, maybe uh, three like D printer sized. Yeah, cool. Yeah, how neat. So, how old is this uh, sub? It's lovely. Uh, so this one's nineteen sixty seven, and very pretty chronometer. You see the four lines there on the the dial. So it's a little different. Wait, what? So um, oh, the so four lines the, on the dial. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so you've got the fifty five twelve and the fifty five thirteen. Nerd. So you gotta help, help, go go deep on this one for and me. And I'm bro. not I'm not like super big on reference numbers. I just I like watches, and I don't really try to memorize reference numbers. But I have this one. So um, the chronometer uh, was the fifty five twelve, and then you've got the fifty five thirteen. Um, same watch, just the same movement too. It's just yeah. that some were sent out for chronometer certification, some were not. And and. So chronometer certification, because we're, we're, we're episode one here. We got to be basic. Yeah. What is that? Uh, so if you've ever seen COSC or chronometer or anything like that printed on a dial or any paperwork or ever heard people talk about chronometers, it's uh, a higher standard and you actually send the watches out to a third party and they'll one at a time quali- or like big they batches, do crash test big batches. No, um, but it's not like, you know, Ford crash test. Five Mustangs. No, and then every, they get every every single, single watch one. that yeah. gets a COSC certificate okay. 
and gets the chronometer designation yeah. has been tested. Oh, okay. So you don't test the prototype and then get that certification for every watch. Oh, I didn't realize that. Each individual watch has to go for certification. Oh. And something that a lot of people don't uh, don't know is that chronometer certification is it's at that moment when the watch is tested that it meets chronometer uh, grade. So do they print it on there before it's tested? Yeah, the the dial will say chronometer. Um, you won't have your paperwork yet. Yeah. So the watch will come back with the paperwork. Uh, but if it doesn't meet the certification, it'll be either reworked or destroyed, yeah, yeah. whatever it is. Throwing I don't, I don't know their policies. Yeah. That's crazy. But uh, there's a little piece of paper that comes with every chronometer watch, and that tells you that it did pass at one time the chronometer certification. Oh. And but it's just at that time. Yeah, yeah. You know, the not rate, ten years later. Yeah, or ten years later, years later it yeah. doesn't mean anything. It right. means that ten years ago it was a good watch and mm. it was good enough, manufactured <laughs> well was, enough. Yeah, it's like JD yeah. Power and Associates initial quality. Exactly. <laughs> it's not, yeah. It doesn't say anything about what it's like in fifteen years. Yeah, I feel you a hundred percent. Well, that's a. I mean, that's a, a beautiful Rolex, and I like. That. Is that as far as you know, like original faded bezel kind of thing? Um, everything on this watch is original. Uh, except for the dial and hands, I actually I have the original dial and hands, but they were a little, they little too patinaed for me. They, they were really trashed, so I I took those out. And also, if I did get water in it, I wouldn't want to destroy the right the original dial and hands. So I have those stored, and I this is actually a um, a reproduction like repra- repainted Rolex dial. So um, hypothetically, if you went, not that you're going to go sell that, but if you went to go sell that. Would you put the original dial in hands back on to sell it, or would you sell it as is with those hands in a box on the sides? Same kind of question I get from car people all the time. I would probably, gosh, I don't know. It really depends who you're trying to sell it to. There are some some people who really want that super, super patinaed or destroyed and ugly dial. Yeah. Or there are the other people that want a more presentable, even patina. Uh, this one looks really nice and even, and that's why I like it. Uh, all the features are there, everything that you need. The one that uh, the original dial f- doesn't have the uh, the minute hash marks. They're like worn out. They, they just kind of oh. faded away. So there's no minute marks, and it looks kind of weird to me without the minute marks. Fair enough. Yeah, and then the, well, look, the hour can, and minute hand are different colors. To change it back. Yeah. You can change it back on your own. Yeah. <laughs> you and and like, would you you do your own service on a watch like that? Yeah, w- when I uh, when I first got this, I serviced it. I had to uh, go through it and do a lot of work on it. It was uh, actually got it in pieces. Really? Yeah. Oh, it was right. it was something that uh, w- it was in pieces, and I had to go through it, and make sure everything was there first, and make sure everything was good. And, and a lot of times, when something's in pieces, there's yeah. a reason it's in pieces. <laughs> yeah. You know, just yeah. like with a car, there's a reason yeah. that guy didn't put it back together and drive it. Yeah. So I had to make sure that there wasn't a reason That's for it funny. not to be together. Looks good. Turned now. out there was a reason for it not to be together, what and I had a lot of work to do. <laughs> what was the reason? Um, the reason was that uh, there was one of the screw holes was actually stripped out. Oh. So where there's where we need threads. There were we were no missing threads. threads, like on the in the case or in the in the movement. Oh, yeah. That's so I had to do some extra work with <laughs> bushings, and it was a whole lot of work. But it was good, a good learning experience to to go through that and do it. And now it works. Now you can service yeah. a completely trashed Rolex if you yeah. ever have to. That's yeah. good to know. All right, so we now we got your we got your vintage Rolex bling out of there. So. Yeah, now now the uh, the Hodinky crowd is now satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> so I also what brought this have? watch in, and it's kind of a upside down. Sorry, guys. There north we go. on the camera isn't north on the table. Yeah. We're still we're still still working trying on to that. get everything lined up. That looks like Russia. Yes, is that Russia. So this is a manual winding watch. It's a, a Russian made watch, like a dive watch is really what it's supposed to be. But an interesting thing about these is they're super cheap. I I don't know what they go for now, but I think like thirty to fifty dollars on eBay or something. Yeah, Russian just watches a, aren't worth. There's anything. tons of them out there, uh-huh. and it's just an intro to mechanical watches. And a lot of people ask me about them because there's so many of them available, and they just want to get into mechanical watches. 
and it's a cool start to to kind of see what it's like to wind a watch and set a mechanical watch and I don't want to have something that's not or, quartz uh, or line step you here, but I'm going to I'm going to pull out another watch from my box because it's in the same vein as yours. There we go. This is a Komandirsky <laughs> and it's on a NATO, so I'm just going to take the strap out entirely cuz that'll make it easier to flip it over cuz it has a display back. Okay. So here, there have a go. have a whack at that. This is a the Komandirsky Death to Spies. Oh, flip over, show them the dial. Uh. It's got a I love the dial actually, and it's um I hate I I hate I I don't know how the right way to say this, Cameron. It's not unlike your watch. Your yeah, yeah, watch. same dial layout, same, same dial layout, offset second hands. Yeah, um, yep. And uh, it's actually I think it's a very attractive watch. Yeah, I bought this for a hundred bucks on I eBay. I like it too. And it took them about six months to ship the thing to <laughs> me. <laughs> the shipping from Russia isn't uh, the greatest. Yeah. But, um, flip it over. It's got it's got a display back, and it's one of those Unitas um, movements. Yep. And uh, what do you want to tell us about this cheap Russian movement in this thing? Uh, you know, this is actually one of the nicer Russian movements. This is really quite nice for uh, for what they were putting out at that time. You see on the balance. I don't really know anything about this movement, but I'm looking at the balance, and I see uh, I got some weights on there. Which is a an upgrade for sure. Do you have a pointing device? Do you I just do. so we can uh, for the video, uh, folks, so you can see exactly what you're pointing at. Yeah. We're still trying. For those listening at home, I do want you to know one thing. While Cameron gets his tools out, is that we're recording the first five episodes at once. So if you listen to episode one and have a suggestion, and uh, that suggestion is not implemented by episode two, doesn't mean we don't hear you. Here we go. I'll point. All some right, tweezers. there we go. We got tweezers. Okay, cool. So you got the balance wheel, which is this gold wheel. The big, and it's this a is big the center wheel. of it, yeah. right there. So this balance wheel actually has some little weights on the outside, and it's just it, more pieces, more complex. Uh, the weight of that wheel, paired with the length of the hairspring it's attached to, is what creates the beat rate of the watch. And the beat rate of this watch would be, I believe, eighteen. Uh, 18,000 uh, beats per hour. And that's, is that how many oscillations back and forth? Yeah, so that's the oscillating uh, rate of the watch. So some watches, uh, 18,000 would be quite low. Am I right? Yeah, so that's the traditional beat rate. And it's an outdated beat rate, yeah. but still traditional. So you'll see a lot of the old tourbillons, mm -hmm. um, com complicated watches and things like that. A lot of them are still using an 18. Uh, 18,000 B rate because nobody's re engineered those movements. Mm -hmm. So they still use there the isn't, traditional. There B isn't rate. a new. Yeah. Eight, yeah, 18, yeah. Yeah. So, but then you have like Seiko's with like the high beat where yeah. it's like 36,000. Yeah. Yeah. What At what point does it become high beat? High beat, uh, currently anything over 28, uh, anything over 28.8. Okay. That's is high beat. High beat. Now Twenty eight eight is kind of the standard today. <laughs> you get to put the NATO back on. I took it off. I don't know how to put it back on. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Ru the Russian stuff. You can. Uh, we'll throw that back under there. Ru if you're looking on eBay, just just poking around eBay for uh, just talking about eBay in violation of our crowning caliber agreement. I hope not. <laughs> but poking around eBay, uh, you can find really cool dial designs and. And uh, if you want an intro into mechanical watches without much of a financial commitment, definitely uh, look to Russia. There you go. I almost wish I had <laughs> you do that on the uh, on the mic on the camera because you just oh, put you putting put a NATO the, on. Put a NATO strap back on. Yeah, yeah. But actually, this came with a, a heinous leather band, and it looks much better on the NATO. Yeah. All right. What else you got, buddy? That's a uh, that Russia. That, I'm glad we went into a Russia tangent. Show me some right? pocket watch. Yeah, let's. Uh, so here's a here's one that's very important to me. This right here. Ooh, is, we may have to refocus on that. Look at that. Right. So this is an old watch. And I wish we could. I want to. I want to zoom out. Can we? Can you? Can you move that up a little bit? The see. camera. Can we get like? It's just. This it's just too far away. Oh no. So you can Ooh. see. <laughs> oh wait, Ooh. we need it. I'm sorry, guys. We're trying to re. Oh, we shouldn't Ooh. have done that in real time. <laughs> uh -oh. oh, that's not served us well. Oh no, 
We need to pause this podcast. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> we broke our camera. Yeah. And now we're back. All fixed. And tell me, now we're back. Look at that. Our shot is improved. <laughs> right? Okay. Oh, so no. this watch does not work. <laughs> Straight up. However, I love it because if you look at it, you see Los Angeles right there on the dial. Oh, Underneath yeah. the, the maker's name, you see Los Angeles, California. And if you look at my Weiss watches, you'll see that we have Los Angeles on the dial of our watch as well. Is it in the same font even? Or it's not the close? same font. It's similar. But this was actually where I got the idea of having Los Angeles on the dial of our watch. Not because you make it here? I mean... We make it here. I love the, <laughs> I love the city, and I think that uh, there's a lot of things here that allowed us to actually manufacture watches here. The aerospace industry, all the the scientific community and all the really intense machining and tight tolerance work that the machine shops are doing, smart people all around us, that helped a lot with making these really different components that we make. So it's important to me, but then when I saw this watch, I bought it because it said LA on the dial. And that was a, a few years ago. It was before I... Uh, before well, you I guess made... It your... was probably like seven years ago that I yeah. bought this watch. This was wow. before I started Weiss Watch Company. Mm -hmm. And I just held on to it because I really liked that Los Angeles was on the dial. And that's the only reason I bought it and, and kept it. But then it turned out that it, it really it meant enough to me that I said, hey, this is a good, uh, a good idea to have the city it's on a the very dial. pretty. Is there anything interesting on the back of it? Um, no, it's a really basic, just like silver watch case. Um, solid, uh, solid sterling silver, and it's pretty heavy. You could, you could hurt someone with this thing. It's uh, very thick. I don't know if you can see how thick that is there. It's very, very thick. But it's just very basic. I changed um, the feet a I won't bit. open it up because it's got a broken crystal and it's got loose pieces in there that'll fall out. But the reason I keep this watch is because of Los Angeles on the dial, and that's why it's important to me. I've never seen another watch that says Los Angeles on the dial other than ours. That's interesting. I, I like it. Well, here, look, look what I, I just learned that you can. <laughs> I just learned that you can uh, <laughs> take a photo. You no, know, you can. It uh, you can do a thing where you change the. Uh, it changes the zoom a little bit on the watch if you use a different oh, okay. a different program, but it also flips it reverse. Oh, yeah, uh, we're learning. Okay, episode yeah. one, we've learned a lesson <laughs> out of episode one. It's a. Can I see that? The yeah. Watch? Wow, it's heavy. Right. Yeah. Is there? Could you? Could you make it work? I could definitely make it work. Like, yeah. You could, right? Yeah. Do you ever? Oh, the second hand for the is floating around. In yeah. The, Oh no! Do you ever feel inspired to to make it work? I'm um, sorry, but sorry, I left the blank video screen up. I apologize. <laughs> you know, I haven't ever felt inspired to make no. that watch work. I like that it's as I found it. I like that. Um, I, I actually I bought it uh, at an estate sale in the valley, and it was a guy who had owned a watch and jewelry store in Hollywood for like forty years or something. Yeah long time he closed the store when he retired and he took all of the used like the old antique stuff he took all the clocks and pocket watches and he piled them all into his house so when i went to this estate oh sale it was God. like it was this crazy not a big house maybe 1500 <laughs> square feet but just yeah. all just clocks full of stuff every single inch of the wall was covered in oh. clocks and every nook and cranny had pocket watches shoved in it. <laughs> it's craziness. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's like good, but also, yeah. Right? I just was at Switzerland and, you know, I'm ha I, I tried to empathize with someone that worked in a cuckoo clock store. <laughs> and it just, I tried. I, like, I really tried, but it occurred to me that I cannot empathize with someone who works in a cuckoo clock store. Like, they didn't seem happy about selling cuckoo. They didn't seem happy about listening to these things all day. But, like, I don't think they were. <laughs> sold into slavery to sell cuckoo clocks. Yeah. They volunteered for that. That's got to be the worst job ever. <laughs> All right. What else we got in, in um, the Cameron Weiss collection that, that makes you what you are well, let's as see. far let's, as watches uh, go? Let me show these two because we're kind of on the topic of, uh, of uh, Los Angeles and the Weiss thing. We've got... Oh, this is a watch. It's called yeah, Weiss. This is a Weiss watch. Did you make this? I did not make this. Oh, this is another Weiss. So this is... Uh, this is a company that still exists today. 
but they don't make watches anymore. I think you may need to. Can you maybe adjust the focus a little bit on the Let's camera? Let's see it's a here. Little, uh, it seems pretty good, right? It's good. It's not, this camera is like it's good. It's not great. Yeah. We're gonna. I think it. It serves our purpose for now, though. But we're gonna. Right? We're gonna constantly evolve this formula. It's a very attractive kind of like fifties, like it's like a mid-century modern kind of thing, yeah, right? With I can the, see that the in the font, dial. and then the the hands are a little sporty. Yeah. Uh, but this, I, I bought it because it's a, a Weiss watch, and it just there's this company that that no longer exists. They don't make watches anymore. They just make um, small components in Switzerland for like, oh, other industries. Really? And yeah. are they white? They're Weiss. Yeah, there's oh. still a, a Weiss machine shop essentially huh. that's in uh, in Switzerland. So. They do that now. They've they've transferred out of any kind of watchmaking. That's a nice, that's um, a nice looking watch, though. Very yeah. cool. Yeah, but I saw if this and I bought it. If there's a watch somewhere, I'd I'd cop it. Right? Yeah, for sure. And then, whoa! I found another one. Not very <laughs> long after. <laughs> another one. Not very one. long after, I found that first one. So I had to buy it, and I have not seen any since. So I'm glad I got these two because they're just. Uh, Kind of neat little, yeah. Little is this trinkets. The, is this the same company? It is same right? company. Yeah, okay. yeah, same time period too. Uh, different time period. If I had to guess, late sixties on this one. Um, you, this this one, this one would be, I believe, the sixties, and then the other one was probably the seventies, oh, early seventies so or late, very late sixties. Huh. Yeah. Is that is it gold? Is that like a real real no, watch? Okay. No, at that time. So this was before quartz watches. Mm-hmm. So you only had one option. Yeah. You had mechanical watches. Oh, so yeah. So there were very inexpensively produced right. mechanical watches. Um, so from that time period, unless it was a really high-end brand, it's going to be just brass underneath there and plated gold. Yeah. And today, you're not going to find mechanical watches where they make them. Well, I take that back. You'll find plenty <laughs> you of cheap would. mechanical yeah, watches. Yeah, yeah. But, but the the real deal stuff is not going to be. Yeah. At this time, it was mechanical or nothing. So this was a, a very inexpensive watch. It's and cool. it was made cheaply for that time. I, I like it. I'm glad. I like your watch collection. That's eclectic. <laughs> and then let's finish it off with something. Oh, do you have. Oh, you got another pocket watch? Um, Yeah, I got a couple pocket watches. You also watches. have something you made, which I think is, yeah. is equally important. Let's bring these out oh, here. Oh, wow. So Wait. this Elgin. I just absolutely love. Is that an, an, an enamel dial or is it just no, white? No, no. This is a silver dial. Actual silver? Uh, silvered. Silvered. So it's actually a, um, it's a galvanic treatment on top of the, the base metal. Oh, interesting. So it's got so, these really cool, really neat. I don't even know. God, I, I got to learn how to describe fucking watches, don't I? I don't know how to describe. <laughs> it's really like elegant. Right. And the, the shape of the numerals, the font and yeah. everything. Uh, that with the hands. It's almost really like thick an, blue steel hands. Yeah, like a Romanized Arabic kind of style. Done, yeah. Like an Arabian Nights sort of they style. They actually, whenever I look at it, I think of Halloween. I don't know. They look like they're kind Halloween. of melting. Like they're cut a out of bit a like pumpkin. candles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I just thought they were interesting. And then I oh. really liked the, the case. <laughs> the case is it's like got a this, Bambi scene yeah, on it. <laughs> exactly. That the just, case looks like it's engraved like a shotgun would be. Yeah. Same kind yeah. of same kind of idea. Just a really nice uh with a deer nice and nice relief on some there. Foliage. And then and I'll uh, open this up. Oh, what happens back there? Oh, the movement. So you've got the movement. Oh, cool. And it's nothing nothing special for them. It wasn't one of their real high grade movements or anything, but still very very pretty. Um, jeweled movement. You can see it's got the the weights on the the balance wheel there as well, and the nice decorations on the. We've got the uh, the ratchet wheel here, the big one. That's and a wind wheel. The, the ratchet wheel is a wind wheel. wheel. So the the ratchet wheel, yeah, is this one, uh-huh. and it's actually directly over the barrel and mainspring of the watch. Okay. So when you turn the the crown to wind it, uh huh, the crown wheel is actually what's being. Uh, being turned, uh-huh. which then turns your ratchet wheel here, and then you've got a little click mechanism that keeps it from unwinding right here. Oh, okay, yeah. So that's just a part of the winding mechanism. Got it. But a, a really nice uh, pattern on the wheels. Yeah, it's got like a like a like a a lollipop swirl. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's a descriptive term. I'm learning <laughs> how to describe watches. Lollipop swirl. There yeah. we go. It's very beautiful. An Elgin isn't that like they didn't survive the quartz crisis, right? Isn't that one of those companies? 
They were yeah. pretty well known before, right? Elgin was one of the largest watch companies in the world. Right. Um, there was a time when Elgin, I believe, was making 100,000 watches a week. Wow. They That's were a lot. huge. Yeah. But oh, now no. they are no more. They are gone. Oop, yeah. Sorry. I'm, I'm working on my camera switching, folks. Sorry. <laughs> There's a delay of game. I get into conversation. I forget <laughs> I'm on that. Then All I, right. got, I got one really old one. This that one looks, is... Was there a bullet hole in that? There's uh, a hole right through the dial of this thing. So... That's actually where you wind the watch. This is key wound. Oh. So you see all the wear around yeah. that on the dial? So nope. you actually open up the front of this watch. Wait. Like that. And then you stick a key and in there you stick and wind a key it that in there. way. And the key winds up the barrel instead of turning the crown like that other one. Yeah. So that's how you would wind it. Wow. How about that? And then uh, it's got an Did interesting it, uh, little... Wait, like, who was it? It was... Uh, Paddock or Philippe invented the keyless winder. It was one of the two of them. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. It wouldn't I'm, surprise me. That's... I'm pretty sure I read <laughs> that it was either Paddock or Philippe yeah. that invented that keyless winding mechanism. Whoa. So this is the back of the movement, and it's, it's a lot different. This was yeah. this was prior to a lot of current inventions in the watch world. So, so the just balance like the wheel, standard issue stuff that we take for granted yeah, today. Yeah, this is a totally different way. architecture. Like think if you're in cars, like Model T, like yep. think like gas pedal isn't necessarily on the right. Yeah, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. this go this is like brass era stuff. Yeah. So what are we looking at? So that cage there, you can see the balance wheel right there underneath that, that it. That huge this the huge open wheel is the balance Whoop. wheel, right? Uh-oh. Let me. The top. So you see the the balance wheel is oscillating out, in there. Oh, oh, it's going underneath. Underneath yeah, yeah. here, so underneath oh, this is. cage, yeah, okay. the cage is on top, and then underneath you've got the balance wheel. That if I shake it, yeah, yeah, yeah. it kind of goes back and forth. Yeah, but that's all that's exposed is the balance wheel. But they have that cage over there that keeps you from touching it with your fingers and so um, basic. <laughs> yeah, just very basic. Does you can work? actually advance it and uh, and retard it. You see uh, over here. Oh, is that thing These on top? Is that like the timing wheel? Exactly. So you can actually oh. mess with it. How cool! I bet people and try to regulate. It. I bet people messed with it wrong all the time. Yeah. I bet people ruined their watches. Yeah. That's the old the Colin Chapman make the suspension adjustable and they will adjust it wrong. Yeah. And that's a nice engraving as well. Yeah, it's got uh, I think like a cherub on the back there or something. A stay engraving. That's really an embossed. This yeah, this thing, one right? would have been uh, would have been stamped on there. Engraving maybe some engraving one. around the edges here. It's very pretty. Yeah. Cool. But Cameron that's Weiss. the oldest thing I've got. <clears throat> how old is it? I'm sorry, did you say how old that is? This, I believe, would be the... Uh, it's definitely 1800s. Um, I don't know an exact date on this watch. I haven't really looked into it. And did you say it works? Uh, it does work, however, <laughs> not well. Asterisk, yeah. Not well. Like, it'll move, but you wouldn't want to tell time with it. Yeah. yeah. And the nature of an old watch like that... They weren't very accurate to begin with. Right. There was nothing more accurate than it yeah, to yeah. measure it <laughs> yeah. with. They didn't have the atomic clock. Yeah, so they didn't check, know how bad it was. To check their work. Yeah. Right? I get you. I get you. All right. Well, that's an eclectic collection of watches. Very right. Very cool. Um, and then let's finish it off with the yeah, well, Weiss, Weiss watch. And I have mine I have mine as well. All my right. Weiss watch. There it is. That Los would be Angeles, my, uh, California. This is my regular everyday watch that I wear. That seems like it does need focusing, my friend. Let's do I this. I think. Focus. On the, you can see my hand yeah. up there. Sorry, this camera's. Mm, I think it's, is that it's, it? It's pretty focused. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, we're doing we're doing the best we can do right now. It's I love your watches because they say Los Angeles, California in them. First off, that's like when I talk about your watch that you made for me, which I wear all the time, um, that's the first thing that comes up always. And when someone asks me about it or is interested in it, the first thing they say is like, is that really all made in California? That's a big sell. It's great. Yeah. Works to your benefit. It also yeah. works that it's a nice watch. Right. <laughs> Flip that thing over, buddy. So this one is actually one of our Swiss movement watches. Oh, is it is. Okay. I haven't. I don't, I don't even believe I've seen one of those. Here, you so, want to compare to the... You have the American one as well? You, you have your, um, I actually don't have an American what? one. You have the American one. I do. Yeah. Oh, no. There's a NATO strap on this one, too. Uh-oh. But here you go. Here's my Weiss watch. 
Right. So this is a a very traditional movement. 17 jewels, manually wound. Um, like It's got the 18,000 beat rate, so a slower beat rate that is accurate enough, but also the low beat rate is great for long-term wear. Keeps the, the parts from turning too quickly and slows down the wearing process. So here's the version that we actually manufacture the uh, the bridges. Caliber 1003. So we make uh, bridges, wheels, pinions, screws, uh, all the other small little milled metal parts for the actual movement itself in this one. Similar architecture. Um, this one has a little bit of a faster beat rate at 21,600, which is still a slower beat rate that reduces wear. Um, so uh, a watch will wear faster at a higher beat rate? I yes. I mean, I guess it moves more, right? Yeah. That's your Ferrari versus yeah. town, town car, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, The so the, the lower beat rate means longer intervals between service, but the trade-off is that a lower beat rate, you're not splitting time into s- the smallest increments that are physically possible with uh-huh. a mechanical watch. So by not splitting the increment so small, you can't be as accurate. However, they can still be chronometer certified. They're still accurate enough that they're within seconds a day. But for the people who are really into trying to get the most accurate mechanical watch. I read this shit and I go, you know, they go, well, this stopwatch, you know, it was... um, I forget the watch, frankly. It was either the Daytona or maybe... No, it was, I think it was the El, El Primero. It was an El yeah. Primero. And they go, you can... It's to the tenth of a second. And, or the... You, you know, and I go, how... A human, you know, how fast is a human on yeah. on this? You know, the watch, it seems, actually, even the mechanical watch is now faster than the human. Yeah. Right? The, and there's... Oh. I wonder if our podcast is picking up the code five outside <laughs> right now. We record in the hood, folks. Yeah, we have. I got. I walked into this office with a hot, almost two hundred thousand dollars worth of watches, and we are in the hood. <laughs> and there's side. There was a drive by over there, like two years ago, Ooh. while Universe was recording here. It was crazy. Back to your watch. Sorry. <laughs> flip that. Flip it over to show the the super special. So yeah. Oh. Car guy's favorite words, favorite three letters are PTS, paint to sample dial, Bugatti French Racing Group. <laughs> How delightful, says Los Angeles in it. Yeah, I'm so I I love this watch. That's a great watch, and uh, and I and we've got I got a few different straps. I changed them around. I got my winter leather NATO right there for it, which looks really good. So um, that man Cameron Weiss with the what the collection. I like yeah. it. You want to see a few of mine? Definitely. While you put a strap back in there, yeah. I'm gonna. I, don't know, I got the case behind me. We'll go. I'm gonna go. I think oldest. We'll start. I'll start at the beginning. So this watch, my dad gave me as a high school graduation present. It is a uh, a Baum and Mercier uh, Capeland chronograph. Uh, it is a nice little watch. Uh, flip that over, Cameron. It's. Uh, I thought it was super nice when my dad got it for me, um, and it was very nice of him. It originally had a metal uh, a, a metal bracelet on it, and now it's got this leather that I, this leather one. But um, truth be told, not a great watch. Didn't keep very good time. <laughs> um, I uh, I did wear it. I, I wore it every day for like five or six years. Um, but it's it's just an it was an okay watch. But uh, I you know I I was just reading about. Uh, a new Bauman Mercier that they sent us, uh, that Crown and Caliber sent us, uh, to talk about in our complications episode coming up. And it actually looks really, really nice. I'm excited. But someone wrote a review and said, uh, a Bauman Mercier probably won't be your last watch, but it does make a good first watch if you want to jump into the Swiss pool. So um, it's this thing's all right. I don't wear it very often, a couple times a year, but it was my first like sort of real watch. Uh, you can have that back. It's not particular. I don't have a fun Disneyland story about that. <laughs> this one, um, another, also a gift from my pops. This is a uh, Submariner, and uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't really get into watches per, per se 
until uh, like th- like a year ago. This is sort of new to me. So Cameron's going to be the teacher, and I'm going to be the student in this whole thing. So my, when I moved to California, my, my father has worn a 1990 era, I don't remember the reference, but black no-date sub for 30 years. The same one every single day. For a watch, it's worn every day. It's shockingly mint. I love it. It's great. And uh, he went to Geneva on a business trip when I was going to move out to California, start the smoking tire. And he came back and he said, I got you a going away present. It's, it's one like mine. And it's green. Isn't that cool? And I was like, oh, yeah, it's green. That's pretty cool. I didn't, you know, I didn't know at the time that green was a special thing or whatever. And um, now it's, uh, it's called a Kermit. It's got a green dial and a black face. It's sort of like a halfway watch. It's got some of the features of the older Submariners and then also some of the features of the newer Submariners. Um, I wore this watch every single day for like a nine, like nine years. Uh, 24 hours a day, never took it off. Shower, ocean, gym, everything. Worked on cars. It's a little beat up. It just had its first service, so it works really good. I just had, went almost 10 years without servicing it. Um, but it's a great watch. There's, you know, Submariners, like, a, if your first real watch is a Submariner, I think you will be spoiled because it's such an easy watch to live with all the time. It goes well with any outfit. It goes well with mesh shorts and a T-shirt. It goes well with a suit. Um, it goes well at the beach. It goes well at a, in a race car. You know, it. It. I literally didn't take it off to the point where I got, like, it kind of fucked me up. Like, I started buying other watches, and I was like, Wait, what do you mean I can't take this in the shower? What do you mean I can't take this in the ocean? What do you mean I can't do this with it? Like, I had never had a restriction put on me because of a watch before because yeah. I got so used to, to the Submariner. It's just such the quintessential, well-rounded sports watch. Yeah, and Rolex is like that. I mean, they have the millions of watches sold every year mm-hmm. for... 50 years mm-hmm. they've been they've been putting yeah. out that many watches every year so it's uh i mean they have the some of the best quality control some of the best knowledge of their products and being able to see how things wear and They're what super issues tough. come up They're, so they've they've been able to build a really really great watch yeah. with all of those years of watchmaking knowledge where yeah. they didn't change their product a whole bunch. And my my bezel has a couple of little nicks here over by the three o'clock. I, I have smashed this watch into stuff. I mean, really hit it hard on stuff. And uh, it's got a few scratches on it. I made sure they did not polish it or touch the bezel or anything. It's got, it's got a good fade going. Um, and I, I'm going to keep this watch forever. It's just there's no reason to ever get rid of it. It's just a great, solid watch. So when it came time, um, Spike Ferriston is the one who, who was like, ooh, that's a Kermit, and got me, <laughs> sent me down the nerd watch rabbit hole. Um, so I went out. Um, I, I, I decided that my next watch, I really liked this very much, and I wanted to get a Pepsi-bezeled GMT Rolex with used um, with a good fade on the Pepsi bezel. This one's in great shape. And this one has one of those, the crazed dials. So apparently they were experimenting with like dial finishes in the 80s. And whatever this is finished with, it cracked. And you can see it if you hold it up to the light, like it's cracked like an old tile. Yeah, like... like, uh we would call them spider. Uh, yeah, spider dial. Spider dial, yeah. spider webs. They kind of look like a, a spider web kind of cracked yeah. throughout the uh, um, the varnish that's on the the dial. Yeah, and I guess uh, you know a lot of folks sent their watches in for warranty or whatever, or got them redialed. It it wasn't particularly fashionable to have a watch that looked broken um, or like it was falling apart, and but some didn't, and so now um, they're not worth you know a ton more money or, um, but I love an error card. I love an, a fucking error card so much. Like, there's Rolexes where the lettering on the word Rolex is off, or there's not a misspell, but like a little the spacing is off. And and uh, I was looking for one of those, and I couldn't find one, but I did find the the spider dial, and it's a lovely, lovely watch. Um, I don't wear it all the time because I'm actually afraid of the acrylic 
glass or acrylic glass, the acrylic crystal mm. uh, getting scratched up. And I'm a klutz. I just am. I just smash my gorilla arms into things. <laughs> and so, so I bought that. I'm really going to come off like an asshole because I'm going to pull out another fucking Rolex right now. The nice thing about the acrylic, though, is that if you, you do can. scratch it, it polishes out easy. That is true. Whereas and the sapphire, if you hit it on something really hard, you'll crack it because yeah. it's very uh, it's very hard material. So it yeah. will crack rather than uh, with the plastic, it will just dent a little bit. You might scratch it. Yeah. You can polish it out. Sapphire crystal, you'll never be able to polish out. I learned that. I, yeah. I, I nicked the, <laughs> the acrylic crystal literally the second day I had the watch. Yeah. I went, oh! And they polished it quickly, which was nice. But I decided I was too klutzy to wear that every day. And I decided that this would be a good investment. So I got this, which is a the Rolex GMT Batman. So same idea. GMT hand, 24-hour hand. I travel a lot of time zones a lot. Um, unlike the older GMT, this one is waterproof sufficiently. I shower and go in the ocean with this watch on. Um, the bezel is ceramic. The gla- the crystal is sapphire. The steel is this new with 904L. Is that it? Yeah, Cameron? 904. You can truly smash this watch into stuff. <laughs> and it's tough, and it doesn't even nick, and nothing ever happens to it. It's brilliant. And so um, I know definitely there's room for both the vintage and the new stuff. But as an everyday watch, these, these things are kick-ass because they're just tanks. Um, I And I like this. And I bought this, and now they're worth more money than I paid for it. Um, we'll go, I'll go with the, um, this is the, um, this is something a little more sentimental. So my dad, Roger Farah, um, was the president, uh, and COO of Ralph Lauren for like 20 years. And Ralph Lauren is a watch guy and wanted to get into watches. And rather than go the angle that most of those fashion designers went and make kind of fashion-y watches. Ralph wanted to make real watches, so he partnered with Jaeger Le Coultur, uh, who manufactured... That is not in focus, Cameron. Can you fix that? Yeah. The, who manufactured these watches uh, for Ralph, um, technically partnering with Richemont, which is Jaeger Le Coultur's... That's not helping. Parent, parent company. And, uh, and so this is a Ralph Lauren world timer. And it's a very cool watch. Um, there are <laughs> Ralph, you know, everyone else, like they were selling like, you know, fifteen hundred dollar quartz and basic mechanical watches. Like they still do, and they're getting their they're losing their ass. Ralph wanted to make real watches. So they made this and they made uh they also made another one, which I have I have one of, which I got from my dad, which is a the sporting chronograph. And I have these, these are not the original straps, but um also made by Jaeger Le Couture. And uh, the World Timer, they made less than 50 of. They tried to sell it for like $12,000, $15,000, and nobody wanted to spend fifteen grand on a watch that said Ralph Lauren on it and not Rolex. So just nobody bought them. And the Chronograph, they made about 200 of. The, this, the World wow. Timer, there's about 50 of. The World Timer is super cool. Go back to the World Timer. Turn the knob on the left side of the watch and, and watch what happens there. Uh, it, the the subdial... It's got a pa- this is a, actually quite a complicated watch. So other other side the the this watch has a uh, obviously it's got the time. Oh, here we go. Sorry, it's got the time. It's got power reserve. It's got the date. It has a second time zone that like scrolls around cities throughout the world. So you f- you have a full second clock inside uh, the lower sub dial, um, and then. Uh, and then you can change it, and then there's also a quick set hours um, to, to, to jump around. So you can do two fully independent uh, times on this watch. It's pretty neat. Yeah. <laughs> pretty neat watch. And it's actually, uh, so these two watches are the same base movement. Yeah, with, with complications yeah. added on. So can you, can you talk about that? Because I think that's just so interesting. Yeah, so this you is a, to, uh, oh, you this want is to, a yeah, JLC uh, movement, mm-hmm. and I think one of the... One of the places they kind of went wrong was not talking about that. They probably should have. I think yeah. that's one of the best parts about these watches. Well, Ralph Lauren is, is that has a bit movement. of an ego behind yeah. it. But this is like a no-joke movement. It's like yeah. a very nice movement. Yeah. So this is a, a JLC movement, and you'll find this movement in JLC watches, obviously. But you'll also find it in, in Vacheron and 
uh, Audemars and very high end brands use this movement. Yeah. And it's the same. The Royal Oak uses it, doesn't it? Like some versions of the Royal Oak? Um, the Royal Oak, I. Or am I just y- making that up? There are some older ones. Okay. Now the Royal Oak is. Uh, it's 2120, which is a, an AP movement. Uh-huh. And but it was actually produced in partnership with uh, with JLC and and Vacheron, uh, but different than this one. But in the, general, if you're going to partner with someone and make a movement, JLC is a good choice. Yeah, JLC yeah. has all the manufacturing capabilities and mm-hmm. the know how to make wheels, pinions, tiny little parts, very complex watches. So a lot of high end brands actually use JLC to manufacture their movement components. And then they'll do the assembly. So it'll be their movement, but JLC's manufacturing the parts. Oh, okay. So so these two watches, you've got one that's got the world timer and it's got a power reserve gauge, and that's the one that we're looking at here, which is the back of the movement. Yeah. And now the back of the and other you can watch see, it's identical. Is exactly the same. Same uh So are you literally taking a base movement and then physically just stacking components on top of it? Yeah. So on the front side of this movement. You're going to have... The dial side. The dial side, yeah. 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 So the dial side of this movement, underneath the dial, is going to look very different Mm -hmm. on these two watches. Um, You have a very strong, sturdy, uh, reliable movement to build upon. And you have your your hour wheels and minute wheels that are already over there powering your your regular hands that Mm -hmm. everyone sees. They will also power additional complications. Hmm. So on this one, you'll have all these little bits and pieces for the chronograph on the chronograph version. And then on the other version, you'll have all the little pieces for the, the world time, uh, power reserve, all the, the other complications that are added to the front side. Mm. And it's just a matter of somebody engineering and creating these additional complications that fit right into an existing yeah. movement. And the cases, I think, are the same thickness. They're pretty pretty close to the same thickness, yeah. right? Yeah, and they'll... Uh, They're cool. And this, by the way, I'm holding this. These straps I get from a company in Turkey called Bosphorus Straps. It takes forever for this dude to ship. I think it's like one or two dudes in Istanbul, but the straps are gangster. <laughs> so, sorry, what were you saying? But uh, So the idea is that you could use the same structure and the same main movement, mm-hmm. which actually decreased cost. And then just sort of stack... And stack stuff these other, needed. yeah. So you can have a deeper line of watches without necessarily having a whole bunch of different engines powering them. You can have one engine for the power with additional complications added on top. So let me give you a PS to this story. The PS to the <laughs> the PS to the Ralph Lauren watch story is that these watches that I have here were commercially a massive failure. There were millions and millions of dollars invested they sold none of them i don't i don't mean literally zero but basically zero and 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 i think as as we have seen and you've described despite a jlc movement despite like complications and like a really nice case and and all the reasons in the world to believe that this is a fine quality item which it is so nobody wants to spend 15 g's on a Ralph Lauren watch, right? So what do they do? Well, here's their new watch, <laughs> which is a Torbion, <laughs> Bugatti-inspired wood rim. And this watch is forty-five, I think, $1,000. And then they have this one, which is... So this one's the Torbion. The, the last one oh. was just a regular watch, but oh, you sorry. see the, the balance wheel. Okay, but I apologize. Are, that's all right. These ones are the Torbions. This is ninety five thousand. So a dual tourbillon. <laughs> what yeah. do you do? What do you? So you know a tourbillon, uh, as you've described. Just tell. Go back. What is a tourbillon? So the the tourbillon, uh, we showed you the balance wheel earlier, and the balance wheel is the the part of the watch that's oscillating back and forth. It's a weight paired with a spring. Yeah. So if maybe one side of that weight is slightly heavier than the other side of the mm-hmm. wheel, you're gonna have an error a positional error that changes as your wrist moves. You, you mentioned before that this is more... Um, it's it's more something that happened, like, in pocket watches, yeah. right? So the, the tourbillon was created 
to average out that problem. If you had a, a pocket watch in your pocket, and it's always, uh, you know, you get your pocket watch and you have it in your pocket like that, it's always sitting in one position. Right. If you have a Here's heavy a spot on. on the bottom of that wheel, that heavy spot is always going to cause the same error. Yeah. Whereas if you have that heavy spot on your wrist, your hand's always moving. It's going right. to be a different error in every position. Right. So for the pocket watch, it was important to average out that error. So what they did is they actually put that whole um, balance wheel and escapement inside of a cage that rotates. Yeah, like uh, like Tommy Lee's drum set in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's, exactly. It's, it's rotating it slowly. spinning, right? Yeah. Or um, and and by spinning, you know the th- the 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 whole cage. You basically counteract any gravity. Yeah, every second that high that heavy weighted point on the wheel moves a degree. Okay, now back to this Ralph Lauren watch, which has two tourbillons in the face. Not to mention a dial that looks like the the uh, the butt of a of a really nice shotgun. <laughs> or, I'm sorry, not a dial, uh, a, a bezel. It's made of some really expensive-looking wood. What do you do with two tourbillons? Uh, There's a couple of things you could do with them. You could have them uh, working together, directly together, so that one is slowing the other one down, the other one's speeding up. What would be the equivalent of a car? Like, literally a two-engined car? Yeah, it would be like having a two-engined car and trying to get them to work in sync. That um, seems extremely... St- Every time you know, I've seen someone try and do that, the result has been uh, something I would consider extremely stupid. Yeah, and it, it doesn't, <laughs> is, uh, is that, it doesn't necessarily make for a more accurate watch. It, it just makes it appear... It just makes it look cooler and more yeah. complicated. That's the fact it. that you can make it and make yeah. it work yeah. is the complication there. Oh, the okay. fact that it works. Just it's not, the, yeah. not so much that it's better. It's well, just that a you were able to make it work. Isn't, it? isn't yeah. a lot of... I mean, you, I, I look at stuff... That Jacob guy, you know, mm-hmm. the Jacob and Co. where it's like dragons flying around Venus, you know, yeah. inside of some giant snow globe on your wrist. You go, well, that is only a thing because it can be, you yeah. know. Uh, well, let's uh, let me uh, go to I have two more interesting watches. One isn't really worth talking about. Well, it kind of is. We can go to we can actually go to it more in a later episode. But this one is a Seiko. Um, Spring Drive Chronograph, non-GMT, for the Seiko nerds. It's SPGB003 for the Super Seiko nerds. And this watch is just cool. It's heavy. It's like a tank. Um, the the <laughs> finish work on it is so crazy. Um, the bezel uh, is made completely of sapphire. Uh, I like the pa- the power reserve gauge. It doesn't have any loom on the hands uh, or the dial, but they're polished so well that in even the faintest light, you can see what time it wow. is because it just reflects. Um, and because of is there some because of the uh, spring drive, it has sorry. Oh here, uh, you know what? I didn't do just you. You, you can put that down. No, it, it's got enough power. Just put it back okay. down and hit the. The chronograph uh-huh. start button, which is on top, Let me it has the perfectly right, yeah. smooth. So you see the the nine o'clock sub dial is on the left, and that's the actual seconds hand. And then the the actual chronograph hand, which is yeah. the big seconds hand, is a perfectly smooth sweep. And you can only get that with spring drive. Um, so spring drive is a very unique movement, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna go really into spring drive in a whole other episode. Um, but my friend Carl Ruiz, the chef, uh, a chef from the Food Network, Marie's Italian Specialties in New Jersey, this guy got me into Seiko's. And when I went to the Seiko store in Miami, I tried on a whole bunch of different Grand Seikos. And, and this thing was just the, the, the detail work. It, I wish it came through better in the, um, in the video. But it's so beautiful. And I found out later um, only five of these made it to America. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, and apparently by accident, I found <laughs> out from uh, a Seiko guy that they were not actually supposed to be sold here, but a couple of them made it, got sent to the Miami store. And I just bought it because I liked it, but it's a very rare uh, watch, and it's so awesome to wear. I just, I love everything about it. It's great. And then speaking of chronographs, this is my last my last watch. Aside, from, We looked at my Weiss here. That's a, a Speedmaster. Um, oh, you want to take the thing out? Yeah. How, remember what hole it's in. I don't remember. All right. How, what hole is it? 
Uh, it's the. <laughs> It's two and three. Okay, two cool. and three. All right. Good. Sorry. How does you that can't... just pop out? Yeah, it should. Yeah. I have an Omega Speedmaster uh, Dark Side of the Moon. We'll just do, do it this way. You want to do it that way? I don't want to mess okay. up. Okay. We uh, can, yeah, we can refocus. So uh, I've never been that into Speedmasters until kind of recently. And, Is that focused um, on there? That looks pretty, pretty good, right? Pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty close. All right. It's, I think it's as good. Uh, Actually, here. Let me, let me hit the you chronograph, can, too, you can, so you can see. You can see comparison let me. to... Uh, yeah, you might have to wind it a bit. Wind this one. So the Dark Side of the Moon is one of the newer versions of the Speedmaster. It's different from the original Moon Watch, and we are going to talk about some iconic watches in another episode, and we're going to talk all about the Moon Watch. But um, this is one of the newer ones. It has a sapphire crystal, and it has a ceramic bezel. So it does not have a perfectly smooth sweep. No, this one's this also one, automatic. Yeah. Sorry. It's... Um, uh, much slower beat rate on this one. Yeah. So it's dividing the seconds into uh, larger increments than the spring drive. Um, the but spring drive is basically no increments. Zero. <laughs> it's a zero increment. Basically. It's like, a, it's like having a Tesla versus a, a car with a transmission. Yeah. yeah. Right? Definitely. Um, but I saw this Speedmaster uh, when I was on in, in Switzerland. I did a lot of... I spent a lot of my vacation in Switzerland watch shopping. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I couldn't find anything I wanted until I finally walked into a store and saw this dark side of the moon. And I went, that's the jam right there. So it's very, very light. It's ceramic. Um, people say to be careful with ceramic because it can shatter. Um, I don't really smash watches so much as, as bump them. So I'm not too worried, but... It's super light. The clasp on the back, you want to flip that over? The clasp on the back is titanium, and it has uh, a really nice display back um, as well to look at the movement, which is really nicely uh, polished, nicely finished. This is a cool watch. I, 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 I get a lot of compliments on this watch, actually. It's a very, very nice uh, piece. So it's fun to wear. So I don't know. My watch collection, like I said before, yours is more eclectic. Mine is a little more obvious uh, with the exception of a couple of sentimental pieces. Um, but And you've been at this for a long time, and you make watches, and I'm just sort of getting into it. So I think the whole rest of this podcast is really going to be you teaching me how to appreciate more than what's hot and trendy yeah. in, in the watch world, I guess, right? Yeah. So shit. Well, that was... That's the show. That's getting started. That's episode one. That's us. That's our watches. Right? That's it. That's uh <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I might have to lead this one. All right. Mickey All Mouses, right. Mickey Mouses, and Rolexes. I'm trying to, I'm, we got Mickey Mouses, <laughs> we got Rolexes, but uh you know what? I think we have a, a love for watches and talking about them. And uh this is the beginning of watch and listen. So uh thanks to Crown and Caliber for letting us do this. That's uh extremely kind of them um and for sending us the box of watches that we're going to use to talk about the next thing yeah it's uh it's like it's, a, it's, it's crazy it's christmas so, or hanukkah it's or something so crazy and uh thank you guys for watching and listening and uh hopefully you subscribe stick around and uh we're gonna keep doing this and uh leave a comment let us know what you think uh what do you want to plug plug uh, Weiss Watch Company. <laughs> Obviously, Weiss Watch Company, the smoking tire, yeah, and uh, and and all of that. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs>